from the Joy News Center. This is News at Eight. Welcome to the Prime Time News Bulletin here on Joy News on Multi TV. Coming up, Speaker of Parliament Ododua Jaho sworn in to begin his three day tenure as acting president. Health officials impressed with coverage of ongoing vaccination exercise but urge parents to ensure all their wards are immunized before the exercise ends tomorrow. Ghana School Feeding Program says 13 million Ghana cities has been released to settle outstanding debt to caterers. EPA moves to stop construction of Kral at Aboso Kaim, it says, is illegal. And in business, newly reconstituted boards of Ghana Airport Company and Civil Aviation inaugurated with a charge to them to desist from interfering in the day-to-day -day running of the organizations. There's also sports, showbiz and international news coming up. Now, very first story, the Speaker of Parliament, Odadua Jahu, has been sworn in as Acting President of the Republic of Ghana. He will remain in that, in that capacity until President John Mahama returns from Mali, where he is attending the inauguration of Ibrahim Boubacar Keita as President. The mantle of leadership has fallen on the Speaker because Vice President Kwesi Emisa Atha is out of the country. The brief swearing-in ceremony done in accordance with Article 6012 of the Constitution, took place in Parliament shortly after the President left the country. Edward Kobli Doachau was administered the presidential oath by Chief Justice Georgina Theodora Wood. I, I, Edward Kobli Doachau, yeah. I further solemnly swear, I further solemnly swear, that should I at any time break this oath of office, that should I at any time break this oath of office, I shall submit myself to the laws of the Republic of Ghana. I shall submit myself to the laws of the Republic of Ghana. And suffer the penalty for it. And suffer the penalty for it. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. The two leaders of the House congratulated the Speaker on his elevation, albeit for just a few days. Right Honorable Speaker, who a few minutes ago has been elevated to the acting first gentleman of this country. And I guess that that rubs on members of this House and also shows and registers significantly that our constitutional arrangements are of age and are maturing. Certainly, on a lighter note, I did hear in the corridors that Honorable W. O. Yebo, uh, is leaving for the Ministry of Defense by 2 o'clock. <laughs> and that Honorable, Honorable Professor Jambuafo is leaving for the Minister of Finance at the same time. Today, we have Right Honorable Dua Jaho, one of our own, as a speaker of the institution of parliament. The speaker, we can only wish the right honorable speaker very well while his authority lasts. Meanwhile, the House has approved the 24.5 million US dollars credit agreement to furnish the offices for members of parliament. It was approved on Wednesday night after a marathon closed door sitting. Some members believe the decision was largely influenced by the Speaker's threat to wash his hands off the matter. What the Speaker said yesterday, for me, is, is pregnant with meaning uh, because uh, we are aware that this particular loan facility has been in the house for more than six months. It's been on and off. Uh, there is this rumor that uh, there was a need for further consultation and also to investigate some aspects of it. But uh, the way it was passed yesterday, 
you could uh, gather from the speaker's uh, demeanor that uh, he wasn't quite happy the way it went. The speaker's demeanor was, he was a bit frustrated because it has been dragging on and on and on and on. And in my opinion, I always say that maybe there should have been an implosion for this building to be pulled down, for a new one altogether to be, to be co co constructed, because it has cost us so, 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 so much. Others called on the acting president to use his temporary powers to address their grievances. Our concerns now, we think the, president, the current president of the republic should work on it. Within these three days, I know we have some difficult, there are some difficult decisions that the executive were not, were not willing to take. And now the country is in his hand, and I think if, if we can use this opportunity also to take some decisions that will be in the interest of members of this house. Work on Job 600 is expected to resume after members have been assured of value for money. Sitting has been adjourned until October 22, by which time they are hoping to have their offices ready. You heard all the members of parliament uh, talking about the election of the speaker as the president, the acting president of the Republic of Ghana. They've also been speaking about the statutory funds which have been delayed for over eight months now. From Parliament House, Emmanuel Ante reporting for Joy News. So Speaker of Parliament, Edward Duaja, who is now acting president of Ghana, albeit for a few days, an opportunity many would relish. Though it would be quite unusual if he does something dramatic between now and when the president returns, he finds himself in a very powerful position. What would you do if you were in his shoes for a day? That's what we've been asking some members of the public. In accordance with Article 60, Clause 12 of the Constitution of Ghana, Edward Do Ajaho, Speaker of Parliament, is President of Ghana now. But if you were given the opportunity to be President for a day, what will you do? Yeah, if I were President just for a day, I will change the Constitution. Okay, if I were, uh, were the President for a day, I will first make sure that I will solve this kind of water and light, these basic amenities. If I present for a day, I will make sure that I try cautiously and wait for the security. And then for a day, just a day, like I will, like I will try and unite. The various parties. If I am president for a day, I eradicate all the rubbish in the gutter and everything so that people can live well. If I were president for one day, what I would do is uh, I'll make sure a lot of finance we have in, in our cafes. I'll help them. If I were president for one day, I'll make sure I'll take control of our family members before because that is an opportunity to me and I don't know whether. Some young man paying that crowd, I'm a man, me a free and my friend and school fees now. Then you know, I had this is a baby one book with you because if I were president for a day, I would help solve the water problem. In yeah, if I were president for a day, I would want to unite the whole country to be one. If I were president for a day, I'll help children that sleep beside roadsides, mothers, and I'll build maybe a school for them to attend. As said, easier said than done. In other news, 2012 Vice Presidential Candidate of the New Patriotic Party, Dr. Mamadou Baumia, has called on the rank and file of the party to stay away from talks that will bring disunity. He said unity in the rank and file of the party would aid in wrestling power from the ruling National Democratic Congress in the 2016 elections. He was speaking in Kumase as part of the party's thank you tour in the region. Mahmoud Mohamed Nourdin's report. The 2012 vice presidential candidate, the chairman and the general secretary of the New Patriotic Party thanked the various executives and supporters in the region for their unflinching support for the party. The general secretary, Kojo Usui Free, spoke about reforms in the party and advised party executives at the constituency and regional levels to put good structures together. I'll tell you what, I did not insult the party. And what I said then, have come to pass. Is that not so? Yes. But, but this is you here, MPP. You do better by fighting yourselves. What even this thank you talk that Jake and Dr. Balmia are doing, I'm only supporting staff. Even this, some members of your party, MPP people, want it to stop. Ah, is that so? 
chairman of the party, Jacob Echebilamte, said the acceptance speech by the party's presidential candidate showed the NPP wants peace in Ghana. He claimed Ghanaians are unhappy about the outcome of the Supreme Court verdict and reminded Ghanaians to keep the government on its toes. United. We are a democratic party internally as well as externally. That's why every four years we go through this renewal, renewal of our offices. As Sir John said, everybody in this party who wants to have a position will face that position through election. Everybody. Even if we have decided that nobody is going to oppose them against you, you will still have to face election. You will still have to go to a, to a primaries or congress or whatever where nobody files against you and then we all say, yeah, yeah, we adopt you and we accept you. Jay criticized the NDC of corruption, urging party supporters to speak on the issue. He credited the National Democratic Congress for being able to generate millions of Ghana cities under JEDA, but failing to invest it into productive ventures to help create more jobs in the country. Jacob Echebilamte also appealed to party sympathizers to allow competition in the party and not be carried away by negative ideas. Dr. Baumia added the party would double its efforts and be more vigilant at the polling stations in the 2016 general elections to avoid another defeat. John Mahama was pronounced as having politically elected, but I am totally sure and I believe that to the rest of my life that we won a moral victory on that. He also spoke about the management of the resources of the country and how to move the country forward. And everyone the moral victory. And we show that this party really cares for God. Because we could, could have really uh, destabilized Ghana if the Nakuwaro has said he didn't accept the results. Um, and it is not in the interest of God. And so, in the interest of this country, for the future of this country, uh, we accepted the results. The president of the National Association of Local Authorities of Ghana, NALAG, Ebenezer Akwoko Frimpong, has expressed worry over the failure by government to release the district assembly's common fund. According to him, the failure by government to release the money has not only affected the district assemblies, but NALAG as well, and appealed to government to build the district assemblies out. Rafiq Salam reports from WA. No conference of the National Association of Local Authorities of Ghana, NALAG, brought together five delegates from the various district assemblies in the region to deliberate on issues that affect the association and also to elect the regional representatives of the association for next month's National Delegates Conference in Sunyani. The president of NALAG and district chief executive for Sekere Central, Ebenezer Kuo from Pong paid glowing tribute to some former district chief executives for their tremendous work done to boost the image of the association. Ebenezer Kuo from Pong was, however, disappointed by government's inability to release the district assembly's common fund. I have talked at length about the challenges we are facing as an association because of the irregular releases of our funds. But even at the assembly level, you can really see or realize what is happening. When the money does not come, what do you do? You may have the best of programs, the best of plans, the best of activities. But when the money with which you undertake the activities or executing the plans and programs are not there, all these plans, all these activities and programs will be on the shelf. The program's manager of the German Development Corporation, Gerhard Luth, whose outfit is sponsoring the program, lauded the development credential of Ghana. As your constitution stipulates, Ghana is making great gains in decentralization and democracy in Ghana, and many countries from Africa and beyond are looking up to you and learning from your achievements. Na Abu Abdul Rahman was retained as the Upper West Regional Representative. He stood unopposed and was popularly acclaimed by the regional delegates. Rafik Salam's reports from WA. 
The Environmental Protection Agency has described as illegal the erection of a kraal at Abosokai near the International Central Gospel Church. According to the agency, the site has already been earmarked for use as a youth center by the National Youth Council. The owners of the project, which is said to have sprung up virtually overnight, are unknown, even though the news team has learned the Accra Metropolitan Assembly gave out the land. No official at the AME is, however, willing to comment. The project, meanwhile, is progressing steadily, despite several attempts by the EPA to halt it. Officials explain it is completely out of place. First of all, there was a need for environmental approval to have been obtained. And then secondly, we think that that project will compromise the objectives of the uh, Kole Lagoon Restoration Project. As we speak, there's a new project which is supposed to carry on from uh, where Kole Lagoon Restoration Project got to, um, which is being carried out by Conti, and it's supposed to help clean up the place and, and restore some sanity into the place. And w the, we think that this project would 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 not serve the interests of that 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 project, which is supposed to benefit um, um, the entire um, citizenry, as well as the, 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 the river system that we have in the area. The crawl is expected to house livestock, including cattle and goats. We are looking at what the area is intended to be used for and how the proposed activity would influence the, the, the intentions and what the the area is currently being used for as well. And we evaluate it on its own merit before taking a decision as to grant a permit or not. In this particular case, even though we don't have, that assessment has not been carried out, our initial reaction is that uh, um, the, the, the siting will not be beneficial to the environment. I mean, you can't imagine uh, having a car in the middle of, of a city. I don't think that's the, the intention for, for that area, and we must all stick to the rules of, of, of the game. Many residents living in and around the project site will not speak on camera. They, however, tell Joy News the crawl will worsen the foul air they already have to deal with in the area emanating from the Kole Lagoon. Authorities at the International Central Gospel Church, located close by, have also expressed reservations about the development. We have more news coming up. Don't go away. We're just a day to go in the ongoing nationwide measles and rubella vaccination exercise. Officials say they have achieved 82% of the 95% target for Greater Accra. The Health Minister Sherry Aite is nonetheless appealing to all parents to ensure their children are vaccinated before the exercise ends tomorrow. Etanam says report. The Health Minister Sherry Aite, together with the Director General in charge of Ghana Health Service, Dr. Ebenezer Piadentra, taught some of the vaccination centers in the region. They first visited the Mampubi Polyclinic, where health personnel were busily administering the vaccines. Reports indicate the Ablikuma area, comprising three health centers, have so far vaccinated a total of 217,558 children out of the 270,382 targeted. The figure represents 80.4% of the 90% targets for the district. When you talk about polio, it's gone. When you talk about measles, now you don't have deaths in measles again. When you talk about guinea worm, it's gone. So now all over the world, they're trying to uh, um, pick certain kind of disease and then eliminate them from the, the world. And measles go with rubella. So now that measles have gone down, we try to combine the measles and then the, the rubella and then make sure that they go because they bear similar uh, characteristics. The children, after receiving the vaccine, have a finger dipped in ink to indicate they have already been vaccinated and then served a yellow card. Health Minister Sherry Aiti says government is committed to ensuring that all children are vaccinated. We are appealing to parents because, uh, you know, a child develops within the first six years. 
And this is the time that uh, we have to ensure that the child is stable, you know, mentally and physically. So we advise that all parents should make sure that uh, their children are immunized against all the six killer diseases. And they must insist that at every immunization center, they should be given the yellow card. Because this is the proof that uh, your child has been immunized. She added, there will be a mop-up exercise in homes and shops after tomorrow. We've done quite uh, you know, a large coverage. I would say that uh, we have uh, the Ghana Health Service has achieved about uh, between uh, 80 to 90 percent coverage. Yeah, the polyclinics uh, will continue with the uh, immunization program. And then we also have uh, designated polyclinics like Adabaka Polyclinics. You know, you can take your child to Adabaka Polyclinic so that uh, you can have the immunization free. Uh, there will be other designated areas, points where parents will go and uh, immunize their children at low cost. The rubella disease, which is also commonly known as German measles, is an infection that primarily affects the skin and lymph nodes. It is caused by the rubella virus and is quite different from the measles causing virus. It is usually transmitted through droplets from the nose or throat, but can also pass through a pregnant woman's bloodstream to infect her unborn child. Some of the pupils shared the vaccination stories with us. Have you been, have you been vaccinated? Yes. Okay. Um, do you know why you're being vaccinated? Yes. Tell me. They said some some sickness has gone, but it swims. But if you have been vaccinated, you, you get them fed. Have you been vaccinated? Yes. Um, did they tell you why you had to have the vaccination? Yes. Uh, Chicha told you earlier that I've always killed 600 people, so you must take it. Otherwise, if you don't take it, it will be dead. So that's why you're taking it? Yes. So tell me here, the experience, is it painful? No. Research indicates before a vaccine against rubella became available in 1969, rubella epidemics occurred every six to nine years, most often among children aged between five and nine years old. Infected children are at a greater risk of suffering growth and mental retardation, malformations of the heart and eyes, deafness, liver, spleen and bone marrow problems, and ultimately death. A simple shot, which comes at no cost, could however spare the child. Etonamse, Joy News. Well, still on the ongoing immunization exercise, it is common sight to hear children burst out crying, sometimes just at the sight of the needle. And Etonamse, who has been following the beat today, saw all the children cry after receiving the shot. Well, except for some children... She came across a choco here in Accra. According to her, unlike their peers elsewhere, these children took the shot as if there was nothing at stake. All right, so now you know where to look for if you're looking for tough children. Now about uh, we now other stories. 13 million Ghana CDs has been released by the Finance Ministry to settle part of an outstanding debt owed caterers of the school feeding program. It follows several complaints by the caterers who say they are owed a total of about 100 million Ghana CDs. National coordinator of the program, Seidu Pa Kuna Adamu, joins us on the line now with details about the latest uh, release. Thank you for joining us, uh, Mr. Seidun. Hello, Mr. Seidu. Hello. Yes. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. So when will the 30 million Ghana CDC you're saying has been released get to the caterers? 
Come again. I'm asking, how long is it going to take before the 30 million Ghana CDs, which has been released, gets to the caterers? The 30 million? Yes. Yeah, I told you uh, they are processing it, and I hope that uh, barring that Monday is a holiday, uh, they should have gotten it by, by Tuesday or so, thereabouts. Okay. Now, there's uh, some uh, misunderstanding about how much exactly is owed the caterers. We're told it's about 100 million Ghana cities. Is that the case? I can hear you. I'm asking, how much exactly is owed the caterers? I can't hear you at all. Okay. I want to know, how much is owed the caterers? How much is owed the caterers? Yes. Oh, I think it should be about some sixty-five million. Uh, you know, we have increased it. The third term one is about fifty percent per, per day per child. Okay. So that should be around. Uh, it's also for seventy days. So it should be around some uh, sixty million or thereabout. Okay. Mm. Is, is, does it mean that, is that part of uh, what, after taking out what you're paying, the 30 million? What is it? The 65 or 55 you're talking about, is it after yeah. you've taken out the 13 million? Oh, yes. I mean, if the 13 million is paid, then uh, yeah, we'll, be, we'll be level that money to pay to clear the indebtedness up to the end of the 30. Okay. And that's why we want to pay, so that uh, uh, supply for the first term will not be uh, disadvantaged. Uh, when can they expect to get the remainder? As said, I'm told the presidency has issued instructions to the Ministry of Finance, and, and they are also promised that they, will, they are working on that, and probably in two weeks' time. Issue, uh, controller should release the managed bank of Ghana. Right, thank you very much. Uh, we'll leave it there. Uh, that's Sedu Adamu. He's the national coordinator of the National School Feeding Program. Elsewhere, about 100 junior doctors of the Tamale Teaching Hospital have laid down their tools over delays in payment of the fuel allowances by management of the hospital. The strike on Thursday affected work at the hospital. The junior doctors say they have not received their fuel allowance for more than a year and several written letters to get management to the hospital to respond to their plight has yielded no result. The spokesperson of the junior doctors say the strike is the only means to get authorities to act. And if uh, they really need us bad, uh, back, work badly, then they should listen to our consent and settle us quickly and get back to work. So we ourselves, we don't like what we have done, but assistance, this is the only way to understand. Public Affairs Director of the Hospital, Gabriel Newtu, however, says management of the hospital will meet the junior doctors to resolve their issue and bring them back to attend to patients as soon as possible. We will in no time reach a compromise so that the patients or our clients will not suffer unduly. So rest assured, we have, of course, we have our senior doctors around, we have our physician assistants, but we we'll definitely need the junior doctors. So no cause for alarm. We will, we will trust that uh, sooner than anticipated, we have our doctors back to render the needed services. All right, many thanks for your time. You're welcome. In a related development, the chief executive of the Tamale Teaching Hospital has handed over following his compulsory retirement from public service. A handing over note written and signed by Dr. Kent Sego stated, quote, in view of upcoming pressing national and international engagement, I, Dr. Kent Sego, this day, 18th September 2013, hereby hand over the CEO and the management of the TTH to Dr. Prosper Akambong as the acting CEO. The handing over has successfully been endorsed by the board and management of the Tamale Teaching Hospital. Dr. Sego retires after a five-year tenure as CEO of the hospital. The Ghana Youth Employment and Entrepreneurship, uh, Entrepreneurship Development Agency, JADA, in partnership with the Songtaba Cottage Industry and Enhancement Program, has graduated 95 dressmakers and 48 hairdressers at Atimpoku in the Sujaman district 
of the eastern region. Haruna Yusuf Wumpuni reports. The program is aimed at creating employment for the youth. The beneficiaries underwent six months training and were given startup kits. 20 master dressmakers trained the 95 beneficiaries, whilst 15 master trainers who are hairdressers also trained the 48 beneficiaries at the various training workshops. And 48, bringing it to a total of 143. 20 master trainers who are the head dressmakers training the 95 beneficiaries at various training workshops. Then 15 dressmakers master trainers also train the beneficiaries, the 40 beneficiaries in the avenue workshops spread across the whole district. We are the first center immediately on your entry into the district from the lower Manya district that are substance or new Accra Day. We have some of the cities that are in Peku, Akusumu. The Eastern Regional Director in charge of Asong Taba Cottage Industry and Enhancement Program, ACI and EP, Vector Squashi, entreated the beneficiaries to put the skills they have acquired to use. I said earlier during my presentation, uh, the beneficiaries are entreated to put the setup kits into good use. Instead of using it to decorate their rooms, they are to put it into good use to benefit their family, the community in which they live, and all the nation as a whole. This is German District Chief Executive Thomas Ampemnyako advised the beneficiaries to develop good customer relations. You will make a living for yourselves, you will be able to support your families, and everybody will be happy. You will be good citizens too. And that is what we are all looking for. Let me reiterate the commitment of the president for this. You see, there have been challenges with Jida and all the others. And he has made steps to investigate what the challenges are, and he will implement all these to make this program a successful one. You are going to see an improved Jida going forward. To help us in the next batch. Hello there, my name is Abigail Adomakwenchi here to update you with business. Now, the Transport Ministry has inaugurated the reconstituted boss of the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority and the Ghana Airports Company Limited. Transport Minister Jifa Tivo at the inauguration warned the boards against interference in the day-to-day -day running of the organizations. The Transport Minister Jifa Tivo inaugurated the eight-member board of the Ghana Airport Company Limited to be chaired by Tony Letha. A nine-member board for the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority was also ushered into office. It is headed by Air Vice Marshal Christian Edom Duvlu. Transport Minister Jifa Tivo tasked the board to help in addressing challenges in the sector and sustain its growth. The unfortunate practices in some instances of the past where the board virtually took over management should be avoided. I will entreat the boards and management to work as a team to realize the objectives of the agencies. As a matter of caution, I wish also to remind the boards that under the governance framework, they are under the supervision of the ministry, and for that matter, report directly to it and should not under any circumstance deal with other authorities above the ministry without due consultation. She gave an update about ongoing infrastructural projects in the aviation sector. The plan to upgrade the Tamale Airport into an international standard to serve as alternate to Kutuka is on course. The commercial agreement has been signed and we are awaiting the signing of the financial agreement to enable the commencement of works for the first phase of the project. Progress is also being made with regards to the establishment of a new national career in collaboration with the private sector under a PPP arrangement. Expressions of interest have been received and are currently undergoing evaluation for the shortlist. 
Board chairs pledged their commitment to work. The chair of the Ghana Airport Company Board, however, debunks rumors he is to be named the next managing director. There's, except for the MD, who will be an executive member, uh, none of us are executive members. Our roles are clearly defined and we do not intend to do, go beyond you know, uh, those roles. Well, I can very confidently tell you that I have absolutely no interest in running an executive position, I can tell you very confidently that I do not, I will not run the company. Why that? Because I don't want to. <laughs> well, that's for us to know. Chief Executive of National Petroleum Authority, Alex Mould, has been appointed Chief Executive of the Ghana National Petroleum Corporation, GNPC. Joy Business gathers his appointment takes immediate effect. He takes over from Nana Boachia Safuajai, who has been asked to proceed on his accumulated leave and later return to the Energy Ministry for reassignment. Edward Barr, who speaks to the Energy Ministry, confirmed the appointment to Joy Business. Alex Mode was appointed MPA Chief Executive in 2009. He previously served as the personal assistant marketing to the Chief Executive of GMPC for over eight years. Now, to sum up the story, some investors from Mauritius currently visiting Ghana have expressed interest in a number of sectors, including agriculture, manufacturing, agro-processing, infrastructure, and ICT. The move has been welcomed by the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, which says it will create job opportunities for Ghanaians and boost the economy. The GIPC has subsequently signed an MOU with its Mauritian counterparts to open up the economy to more investments from that country. The over 40 investors from Mauritius, an island nation about 2,000 kilometers off the southeast coast of the African continent, met their local counterparts in Accra to clearly identify businesses they can help grow. Investment from Mauritius currently stands at about $1 billion, a figure the Mauritians hope will quadruple with the signing of the MOU. We find that the welcoming nature of Ghana, the uh, how to call the skills that's available, our businessmen of feeling it that they are in common ground. So we're looking at investment in manufacturing, we're looking at investment in agriculture, we're looking at investment in agro-processing, we're looking at investment in the infrastructure, be it electricity, be it uh, how do you call resource, how do you call renewable resources, be it in terms of roads, dams, ICT, education. Um, how do you call um, health? We are now looking at investing in both in, in, in agriculture, manufacturing, and services. Ghana has meanwhile welcomed the Mauritian investments. With the influx of our brothers from Mauritius to bring in capital, definitely companies will be able to expand their uh, operations and do better. And once your economy is growing, there's a tendency of increasing job opportunities and that our graduates who are numbering or whose numbers are increasing year in, year out, will be assured of some uh, employment opportunities. Having invested heavily in countries such as India, Zimbabwe and China, Mauritius is now looking at West Africa with Ghana, one of his favorites. Well, that's some good news for Ghana. Now away from Ghana to some international business, U.S. Bank J.P. Morgan Chase has agreed to pay four regulators $920 million relating to a $6.2 billion loss incurred as a result of the London whale trade. Under the settlement, $200 million will go to the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission and £138 million sterling to the U.K.'s Financial Conduct Authority. As part of the deal, J.P. Morgan admitted violating U.S. federal security laws. Traders at J.P. Morgan's landing office built up huge losses in derivatives trades at the beginning of last year. The bank's chief investment officer in Adru stepped down following the revelation of the losses in 2012. And that's all for business. As always, it's a pleasure bringing you business.
Time for the very latest in the world of sports. The managing director of Accra Hearts of Oak, Neil Armstrong Mortigley, has called on fans of the club to be mildly expectant of results as the board takes on a three year project to restore the lost and their lost glory in there. He was addressing a press conference to outline the medium to long term goals of Accra Hearts of Oak at the club secretariat this afternoon. Every out of folk fan there whose spirits have been, has, has flagged over the last couple of years, I promise only one thing. I promise hard work, and all of us must get involved in this hard work. There are some who have said this is too much talk. Every day we hear this, we hear that. For me, the talk is important for now because if we don't talk about what we intend to do or what we want to see, it becomes difficult for people to connect with what you are doing. So connecting with restoring phobia and glory is important for us as a company and as a club. We need our fans to connect with the theme, Restoring Phobian Glory, and to understand that it is a long-term process. It will not happen overnight. And that's why we put an initial three years as the period over which we expect to begin showing the indicators that indeed the glory of Hearts of Folk is coming back. So what are the 11 indicators that should show to you media and to every phobian and every Ghanaian watching me, that Hearts of Folk is getting back to its former glory. We see more of this uh, when Accra Hearts of Oak play Kumasiya Santa Cruz at Accra Sports Stadium and a super clash on Sunday. Let's do boxing now and office sports boxing promotions in collaboration with the Dehu Boxing Promotions are uh, putting together a boxing night dub Friday night at Accra Sports Stadium. The main bout of the night will be the WBC Youth Interim Welterweight World Championships, which will be contested by Ghana's Frank Doji and Algeria's Nasrin Dehu. Now, both boxers have been speaking to Joy Sports. Yeah, firstly, firstly, I am very happy uh, to fight here in, in Ghana, in my second country. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm ready for this fight. I work hard. I work hard with my team. I want to, de I want to thank my team for the effort, for the hard work to bring me in Ghana for this fight. Uh, I have a, 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 good, a good boxer, a good opponent from Ghana. Uh, his name is uh, Frank Dezi. Frank Dezi. But, uh, but I think I think that uh, I, will, uh, I will give you a good show with a big, big, big fight. And uh, I wish that I bring the title and the belt from Ghana to Algeria. Well, I, prepare, I prepare very good way. And uh, for, uh, I had a fight for um, some months ago, so I prepare. I'm very, very prepared. So this that I must take it, and I take it too. Well, that'll be all for sports tonight. My name is George Addy Jr. Do have a great evening. Israel, join us with Chobit. Now, Ghanaians all over the world have been encouraged to patronize more Made in Ghana products, including good movies made in the 70s, in order to remind the youth of today how rich our culture is. Have you ever tried comparing movies made in the 70s or 80s to those made today? Notice any difference? Well, the movie Heritage Africa by ace filmmaker Kwawansa has been shown again in the cinemas to remind Ghanaians, especially the youth, of how movies can be used to portray the country's culture. You know that all petitions are channeled through the district commissioner's office. The movie Heritage Africa, which was shot in the late 80s, has scenes that depict African values and the need to preserve our culture. Some patrons at the screening share their impressions about the movie. Um, this is one of the best movies I've seen in a, in a long while. Um, it actually um, talks about the African heritage and how we've uh, mistakenly treated the way that it belongs to us. Um, it's a reminder, it's a wake-up call for all Africans, blacks, to come back to the heritage. Let's take pride in what we have. Africa is super rich, so fertile, so thick. But my fear then, regardless of all these accolades I have expressed about my view about Africa, is that we, we forget where we come from so easily and it's difficult to project what we don't have. So I believe that the more of our heritages we embrace, the more of that same heritage we would portray. It's to remind ourselves that
that you know we've we've really got a great you know amount of talent in our land that um, we should be part of what we have and basically to remind ourselves to patronize what is truly ours. Another countdown to West Africa's biggest outdoor event, the Joy FM annual schools reunion, which is set to hit Accra on the 28th of September, has begun with the school's live studio appearances at Joy FM. The Joy FM annual schools reunion brings together all students from all second cycle and tertiary institutions in Ghana on a set aside day. This year's event is coming off on the 28th of this month, and prior to that, the usual studio appearances by the schools have begun. Last night, all students from Inglisi Amal from Senior High School and Ketal School took their turn in the pre-jama competition and studio quiz. What is the tagline for Fiesta Condoms? How many condoms are there in a Fiesta pack? Three. Which stout in Ghana is less bitter but much better? Today, two schools from the Volta region also had their turn. The organizers have estimated that this year's edition of the Joy FM Old Schools reunion will be their biggest event ever. Well, that's it for the bulletin. Before we go, the quick round through our top stories. The Speaker of Parliament, Rodua Jao, has been sworn in to begin his three day tenure as acting president. Health officials say they are impressed with the coverage of ongoing vaccination exercise, but are urging parents to ensure all the awards are immunized before the exercise ends tomorrow. The Ghana School Feeding Program says 13 million Ghana cities has been released to settle outstanding debt to caterers. The Environmental Protection Agency is seeking to stop the construction of a kraal at the Abosokai. It says is illegal. And in business, newly reconstituted boards of Ghana Airport Company and Civil Aviation have been inaugurated with a charge to them to desist from interfering in the day-to-day -day running of the organizations. For more news, log on to myjournalline.com. My name is Israel Lyon.